So here's a little PDP-8 program I wrote. It just prints the alphabet and then stops. And um, we're going to load it into the computer and run it. But before I do, I just wanted to walk you through it. It begins at location octal 200. First thing we do is clear the accumulator. And then we load the uh, contents of the char word. You see down there, that's a 301. That's the octal ASCII code for the letter A. Next thing you see is uh, LUP. That's just the name or the tag of that instruction. And the instruction is TLS. TLS sends the contents of the accumulator to the teletype. Now, this takes about a tenth of a second, so it would be a good idea for us to wait for the teletype to finish printing. So the next instruction, TSF, that's, uh, it's going to skip on the teletype flag. So uh, if, if it doesn't skip, we're going to jump back to the TSF. That's that jump point minus one. It just jumps back to the TSF. Once the teleprinter becomes ready again, it's finished printing the letter A, uh, then it skips that jump instruction to the next instruction, which is IAC. That's increment the accumulator. So now the accumulator should have a 302 in it. That should be the letter B. The next thing we do is increment and skip if zero M26. Now if you look down, M26 has the value 7746. Below that you can see the uh, octal calculation of why I got to that 7746. In effect, that is a negative 26. I'm going to be counting it uh, to negative 26 and then negative 25, negative 24. I'm going to be incrementing it all the way to zero. If it's not zero, it means we're not done printing the alphabet and we jump back up to loop and print the B. If that does get to zero, however, we're going to skip that jump to the loop and we're going to halt. That's the whole program. That's all there is. Now let's enter it and see if we can compile it and run it. All right, we're going to begin this by um, putting the bin loader into memory. Now, I showed you how to do that in a previous video, so I'm just going to cheat here and load it from a memory cell so that the bin loader is there. You know that the bin loader is there if you go to location 7777 and you examine it and you see a 5301. That kind of tells you that the bin loader is there. Okay, so now we're going to set the program counter to 7777. That's where you start the bin loader. And we're going to load the editor tape. So I'm gonna go get the editor tape. I'm going to put it in the reader. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is run. Now we're reading the editor into memory at 10 characters per second. And as you can see, that's a little bit tedious and it's going to take us, well, it looks like about three minutes. So I'm going to cheat again and I'm going to make it go faster. The emulator allows this. The PDP-8 seems to tolerate it just fine. It makes the teletype reader behave like a high-speed paper tape reader. <laughs> All right, with that done, we can now go to location 200. Notice that the computer stopped. The run button is out. The run light is out. That means the load was successful. So now we're going to go to location 200. That is typically where programs like this begin. And we're going to hit the run button. Ah, I heard the teletype do its little clack. That's good. That means we're probably working. So I'm going to append into the current text buffer by typing A, and then, well, I, I have to type backspace here because the backspace key is mapped to the carriage return key on the teletype, and the PDP-8 wants the carriage return button pushed, so okay, I'm gonna have to push my backspace key. Okay, now I should be typing. So. Uh, I'm going to start typing my little program here. Now, I wrote it out by hand. You can imagine how difficult it would be to try to just code something uh, in this editor. So I write it out by hand. That's usually the best way to go. So we tab and then type star 200 and then the backspace character, which is the character turn. <laughs> and now tab 
and clear the accumulator. Good. Backspace character. And now tab. Tad uh, char. Good. Backspace character. Um, now we type L U P comma tab and T L S. Good. <laughs> The tabs aren't actually necessary, but it does make it look better. Uh, tab TSF. Uh, yes, that looks correct. Good. Tab uh, jump uh, point minus one. Good. Um, uh, uh, ooh, ooh. No, I wanted a tab there, didn't I? Okay, so now I need the rub out character, which is option backslash. Now that, good. That's kind of like the backspace. Uh, tab. Um, um, this is after the jump point is minus one. Yes, I A C. Good. Good. And um, tab. Increment and skip if zero, um, M26, good, uh, return, good, uh, jump loop, jump, loop, good, uh, halt, good, um, char, comma, tab, 301, that's the letter A, and uh, M26, comma, tab, um, 7746, that is the uh, end of the program, and then uh, we always end it with a dollar sign, because that's the flag telling the assembler that it is done. Okay, now I leave append mode by typing an option L. It, it actually should be a control L, but on this keyboard it's option L. Oh, good, now it's put this in the buffer. So the next thing I want to do is punch this. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to do that by, um, first of all, getting a, a, a leader on the paper tape got to have a leader otherwise you know you can't line it up properly i'm going to put the punch into auto mode so that anything that gets printed on the paper also gets punched and then i'm going to type the p command uh, oh i did that wrong okay so now what i need to do here i'm going to finish typing the p command that's okay i can do that notice that the computer stopped that's right. The computer stops now so that I can first uh, get a leader <laughs> and put it in auto mode. And now I can hit run. Now that the punch is prepared, I can hit the run button and it's going to print out my program, but also punch it. Isn't that nice? At 10 characters per second. Okay. Well, I believe that finished it. So um, maybe another little bit of leader would be a good idea uh, to finish that out. And then I'm going to put that tape into the rack and I'm going to name it um, something like, um, let's say alphabet, alpha dot pal. Okay. So the next thing we want to do is load the assembler. Stay tuned a second for that. All right, so now it's time to compile our program. Now, to do that, we will start with the bin loader again. And this time I'm going to cheat by just loading the bin loader into memory. Uh, and then we will set the, load, the starting address of the bin loader. And we will go get the assembler, the PAL 3 version 2 bin assembler, and we will put that in the reader. At this point, we can just go, and it will read the assembler into memory. Now, as you can see, um, doing that on a 10 character per second tape reader would be um, five minutes. So we're going to cheat and go fast.
this is still annoyingly slow. Um, so on the emulator, of course, you can cheat by saving a core image of the assembler. Which, if you look at the lower left, you'll see I have done that. I have PAL3 down there as a core image. So I'm not going to be loading the PAL3 assembler by paper tape every time. Good. Okay. The PAL3 assembler is now loaded into core. Let's get rid of that tape. And now you have to be very careful about how you do this. I, I advise you to set up a checklist. <laughs> First thing we're going to do is turn off fast on the reader. I want you to see this at slow speed, although it does work at fast speed. And once you get used to it, you'll probably just leave it at fast speed all the time. We're going to go get our source tape, alpha.pal, alpha.pal. We're going to put it in the reader. We are going to set the starting address of the assembler at 200, typically where all programs start on a PDP-8. We're going to tell the assembler that we're executing pass one. Notice the switch down there, that's the indicator for pass one. Okay, I believe everything is set properly, so we should be able to run. Notice that it punched a little bit. Um, that's because it actually talked to the high-speed punch and told it to punch something. We're going to junk that. We don't want to see that there. Now, you could do this at fast speed. Um, there's no nothing stopping you. It's just kind of interesting to see how it would run at slow speed. And it's fun to watch the lights as well. Uh, look at the number of instructions executing per second at the lower right. You don't want that to be higher than about, well, I don't know, 200,000, because the assembler uh, malfunctions if the computer runs too fast. <laughs> There's, there are bugs. <laughs> so it's printing the symbol table at this point. Yeah, there are bugs in the assembler that kind of depend on the fact that the PDP-8 was a slow machine, and if you execute it too fast, it loses sync with the I.O. Okay, pass one is complete. It has printed out the symbol table. Isn't that pretty? We like that. Now it's time for pass two. All right, we're going to set the switches for pass two. That is the pass two setting. We're going to go get our source tape and put the source tape back in the reader. We are going to put the punch in auto mode. Now, what that does is that that will punch anything that the uh, program prints to the teleprinter. So the program does not know it's using the punch, at least in this mode it doesn't know that. So it just thinks it's spewing the binary to the teletype and that auto button makes it also come out on the punch. Okay, with that, I believe we are ready. So we're going to push the run button for pass two. That's punching a leader. I'm gonna, no, no, I'm not. I'm gonna let it be. I'll show you what happens here. Okay, now it's reading in the source code. And you know, this is annoyingly slow and it does work in fast mode. So once you get used to it, you can actually get it to work with the fast reader and the fast punch but it's fun to watch it in slow, <laughs> I, I suppose. Uh, you see the little rows of dots there, those are spaces going in and then there's a line of code and then spaces and then a line of code, right? And then spaces and then another line of code. You can actually watch the code go in on the paper tape reader. <laughs> okay, um, the code is just about done. Uh, it's going to finish this up. Good. Now it's punching the binary. Small, small binary, right? Not a big program. Uh, and the, the compression ratio between you know source code and binary is pretty high. Now we're going to save the punched tape. Notice it appears in the rack uh, as tape number 5372. I'm going to change the name of that to um, alpha.bin. So that's going to be our binary tape. Okay, um, we could go through pass three here. <laughs> um, let me show you how that works. Um, 
we set the assembler for pass three. Let's get rid of the uh, teleprinter output by pushing the junk TTY button down there. It just clears that. Okay, uh, turn off the auto punch. We really don't need that anymore. Let's go get alpha.pal1 or, or pal and put it in the reader. Uh, and um, we should just be able to go. Now let's see if that works. Apparently it does. Okay. It's reading in the source code. I know, I know. You'd really like me to push the fast button right now, wouldn't you? <laughs> but it's worthwhile seeing what this was like on an ASR33 teletype. I know, you'll push the fast button later when you play with this, but... <laughs> okay, here goes the teleprinter. Pass 3 prints the listing. Now there's the listing of the program. Um, it shows you the address to the left and the contents of memory next to that and then the source code next to that. Now, again, you'd probably like me to push the fast TTY button so that it printed this faster, but, you know, it's, it's fun for me to see just what I put up with when I was 18 years old playing with a BDG8. <laughs> and it's not that big a program, is it? Not done, not done. Don't, don't stop. See, there, it's, it's actually working on something. Oh, yes. Now it's going to print the symbol bit. And now it should be done. Let's see if it halts. Oh, yes. Okay. So there's our listing. Now, if you'd like to save that listing, there's a little button down there called Save TTY, and that will put the listing into the uh, asset, the listing.txt asset, which you can transfer to Dropbox if you want. I'm not going to do that here. I don't have a need for the listing, so I'm just going to junk it. <laughs> okay, last step. Let's load our program and see it run. So we're, we're going to use the bin loader, and the bin loader should still be in memory. Most of the programs that we run do not corrupt the bin loader in, at the highest part of memory. So uh, we're going to set the switch register back to null, just in case. I'm going to junk the uh, odd little thing in the punch. And... Um, I'm going to go get alpha.bin, put that in the reader. You notice that there's some funny business at the beginning of this tape. There's a, a leader hole, and then it looks like two blank, uh, unpunched uh, rows, unpunched bytes, two or maybe even three, and then more leader. That's probably going to give us some trouble. It, in, when you were using the PDP-8 for real, what you would do is you would position the tape on the read head beyond that nonsense. Uh, we can't do that here. I don't have a way to do it. Um, it. There's no way to manipulate the tape directly, but we can cheat, and, and I'll show you how we cheat. So I've got the uh, bin loader address in the program counter. Let's run. And, oh, heavens, it stopped. Why? Well, that's because of that junk in the leader. So we just push run again. And away it goes. It's now reading in our binary program. Da -da -dee. Now it's a small program, right? Not a lot to it. So it should finish. There it is. It's done. It has read in our binary program. Now our program begins at location 200. Let's see uh, what it does. Do you remember what this program is supposed to do? <laughs> it's supposed to print the alphabet and stop. Okay, let's see if it does. I'm going to push the run button. <laughs> I'm a programmer. 